Hi everybody and welcome to a special Web Was Wrong edition of Observing with Web. In the original January episode, I said that the January 31st total eclipse of the moon was not really going to be worth looking for. And um, Lancaster newspaper had some questions about it, and they contacted me. So uh, what I decided to do is look into it a little deeper and see, well, maybe we could see something. And I was wrong. Uh, we definitely can see something, assuming the weather is good. Let's figure out what we can see and compare it to what we would normally see, because this is a somewhat unique eclipse that's happening. So um, I'm not going to go into solar versus lunar eclipse and exactly what goes on during a lunar eclipse because there's plenty of much better videos out there. But I want to talk about what we see in Lancaster um, just because that's where I am and I like helping my community out. So here we go. So uh, what you think of with a total lunar eclipse is the typical eclipse, which we had a really good one the night of December 20th in 2010. I remember staying up the entire night to see it. And what you think of is at night, the moon's way up high in the sky. It turns this deep blood red color, uh, and it's just really amazing. And it is. It's, it's really cool. And so I remember staying up, even though I had school the next morning, uh, I pulled an all-nighter, and what happens is, during a regular total eclipse, you see the moon way up there in the sky. And if we zoom in, we can see that the moon is there. And I also have highlighted here the Earth's shadow. Okay, And there's actually two parts to the shadow. There's the dark inner portion, which is called the umbra. And that's the very dark part that you definitely see with the partial eclipses. Uh, and then there's this outer part, which is called the penumbra, which is the shady outer part. And you can actually simulate this by just taking, uh, let's say, a piece of paper. And if you got some sort of lamp over here, okay, hit like some, some sort of light or something, you can cast a shadow on this paper. Now, if your pen or whatever it is, I like to use a bottle cap because it's circular. Uh, and I can't really show this to you too well, but when it's close to the paper... Uh, it's a very sharp shadow, but when you move away from the paper, your shadow gets a bit fuzzier at the edges. The fuzzy part at the edge is the part that is called the penumbra. Anyway, uh, so what happens during a usual, what we think of a normal eclipse, is as I fast forward with time, the moon actually passes through the Earth's shadow. Now you start at the penumbra, which you don't really see anything. The penumbra doesn't change it much at all. In fact, even if I zoom in, you can barely even tell. Uh, but the exciting part happens right about now when the moon passes through the umbra, the dark inner portion of the shadow. And as you can see on the simulation here, it gets a very deep, dark red color. And the reason it gets a very deep, dark red color is because... Um, the only light that is hitting the moon at that point is light that has gone through the Earth's atmosphere, mostly scattered, but sort of bent a little bit of Roy G. Biv. Everything but the orange and red has been scattered. And so a little bit of orange and red actually makes it through and bends uh, because of the atmosphere and hits the moon. That's it. As one person has said before, I think Neil deGrasse Tyson, when you look at a total lunar eclipse, you are looking at all of the sunsets and sunrises on Earth at the same time, just reflected by the moon. Uh, so anyway, then eventually it leaves the shadow and you get another partial lunar eclipse and it goes into the penumbra, which you can't really tell, and it's basically over after that. In the past, we've had a couple eclipses kind of like this, April 5th of 2015 and September 27th of 2015. Now, the September one was cloudy. We didn't really see much here in Lancaster. And the April one, I was actually out in California for that one. Uh, and actually, I don't remember if we could see it here. I think we could. But anyway, so we, we get them sometimes. So what makes this eclipse totally unique for Lancaster? Well, the partial part of the eclipse starts right before the moon sets and the sun rises which are very, very close together. So when you see this, that makes three things happen, okay? Number one, we're only going to see a little bit of this eclipse, okay? We're only going to see about maybe a half an hour of the partial part of the eclipse. So no totality. There's no blood red moon for us because of the eclipse. There might be some reddish color, but for another reason I'll explain. Two, the partial will happen at dawn, which means... Uh, the sun hasn't risen yet, but it's close. So the skies are going to be sort of a bluish, 
um, probably bluish, some other kind of color depending on how you're looking in the atmosphere. Uh, and number three, the moon is going to be very low on the horizon. Uh, it'll, it might even be a little yellow or reddish or orangish because it's so low on the horizon. And that happens anytime the moon is low on the horizon because, again, all that light has to get through the atmosphere and there's a whole lot more atmosphere that you're looking through when you're looking at the horizon compared to when you're looking straight up. Okay, so let's get down to brass tacks. How are you actually going to see this? All right, right place, right time. First off, the right place. You need to make sure that you have a very clear view of the west-northwest horizon. Take a look at this sky over here. What I have here is the moon is over here in the west. Let me, let me zoom in on that so it makes a little more sense, okay? So what you'll end up seeing is the moon is going to be out here in the west. This is the horizon down here. 5 a.m. okay now at that point it's entering that penumbral phase this part doesn't even really matter okay this part again like I said before you're not going to see really any change okay so nothing's really going to happen however what is going to happen is right about uh, 650 650 is uh, 650 is when the moon actually starts entering that umbra, that dark portion. And so that's when you'll start seeing that partial shadow take over the moon. But, oh no, we've got this horizon in the way. Get out there. Make sure that you are out there, uh, I'd say, by 640. It hasn't entered the shadow yet, but you might see a little shading on the one side of the moon. But I believe 650 is right when it hits that umbra. That's when you're going to start seeing it. And then you'll start seeing a partial eclipse of the moon here in Lancaster, at least until it reaches the horizon. And then you can't see the moon at all. So um, you're looking at 6.40 a.m. to about 7.15 a.m. Now this is where some photographers can have a really good time. Because the moon is low on the horizon, you can actually get some really cool shots of cool foreground pictures like a building or a church or a mountain or a tree. Or you could have somebody like holding their hands like this and holding up the eclipse. Yeah. I, all kinds of creative things because it's low on the horizon. I challenge somebody to get an Oreo and make it look exactly like the eclipse actually looks like and hold it up next to the eclipse. But bottom line is you got to be at the right place, a very clear view of the northwestern or west northwest horizon. That means up on a hill, no trees, no buildings in the way unless they're low and you can get a good uh, good framing of a picture for that. So right place and the right time between 6:40 and 7:15 a.m. Langston newspaper had some questions for me that I thought were really good questions, so I thought I would answer them as well. Uh, some of you are probably asking the same questions. Now, uh, they looked at a site, mysteryeclipse.com. It's a very great site. And they saw that the last lunar eclipse visible in the Americas was nearly a year ago last February. It was a penumbral eclipse. How is that different from what we'll see? Well, a penumbral eclipse, you don't really see anything like I talked about before. In a penumbral eclipse, the moon only goes through that outer portion. It doesn't go through the middle of the shadow, just the outer portion here and you don't really see anything in fact when i do my videos and podcasts i don't even cover the penumbral eclipse because it's not impressive whatsoever second question is can you predict what this will look like well i think that uh i think it's going to be a weird combination of a little bit of light with the background sky it'll actually be a partial eclipse but it might look like a total because it's low in the horizon and we get that reddish color when that happens um, so uh, honestly I don't know we're, we're just gonna have to see and it kind of depends on how many clouds what the moisture content is what the what kind of pollutants or not are in the air that sort of thing number three they asked is will I be watching with my students and um, I hope so uh, I plan on offering extra credit that morning to people who see it because it starts before school starts uh, so if they want to come in early I'll I'll give them extra credit I'll break out a telescope, get the cameras out, we can start recording this, which will be really neat. Uh, and finally, they ask um, that uh, they had heard somewhere that it was a blood moon uh, as well. And it's, it's funny how some of these things go across. A blood moon is an eclipse moon. When a, when a full moon goes through a total lunar eclipse, that's when you get the blood moon. And that's the only way you get the blood moon 
moon. Um, it's not really an astronomical term. Uh, so this is not going to be a blood moon for us. If you are in California, you might get a blood moon, but not here. Uh, however, this is a blue moon. That means it's the second uh, full moon of the month. Uh, it is also a supermoon, which means that the full moon happens. Um, now, the moon orbits not in a perfect circle, not in a perfect circle, but actually more of an ellipse. Now, this is exaggerated, okay? But when it's closest in its orbit, okay, uh, that's when, right about here, that's when it's called. Um, perihelion and when the orbit of the moon is as close as it's going to be uh, at the same time as a full moon they call it a supermoon it's just a little bit bigger nothing much but a little bit bigger uh, and also any moon can appear red orange or yellow mostly orange or yellow um, it just has to be low on the horizon it will be different from a blood moon eclipse moon that's it's it's very unique in fact I'm probably showing a picture right here of a picture that I took back in 2010 of a blood moon um, but yeah I mean it's it should be worth it just check your weather before you go out if it's going to be completely clouded over or raining don't bother but if it's going to be even mostly cloudy you never know uh, where the break in the clouds might be so go out there take a look bring your camera I'm sure it's going to be pretty cool I think it's going to be neat I was wrong and hopefully I'm right about this.